Psoriasis can occur at any age. Uh, the youngest reported patient what, had it at birth. Uh, the oldest reported patient started with psoriasis over the age of 100. Uh, so it can occur at any time. Uh, typically, it's characterized by waxing and waning, a little bit better, a little bit worse, with occasional flares, sometimes induced by very specific triggers, uh, like a strep throat uh, or some other infection, uh, sometimes induced by a medication. Um, only about one out of 10 patients spontaneously uh, uh, remit, so, so the disease suddenly uh, disappears uh, often without a known cause and doesn't come back for a long time or ever. Uh, but that's only about one out of 10. Uh, the majority of patients have a relatively stable course of psoriasis. Um, what we've learned in recent years is that psoriasis isn't just a disease of the skin. We've known for a long time that uh, approximately 30% of patients have psoriatic arthritis where the joints are affected, especially, um, well, it can be any, any joints, but particularly the small joints of the f uh, hands and feet. Uh, some patients will have uh, axial spinal involvement, um, and others will have um, uh, large joints. Um, but psoriatic arthritis is a well-known comorbidity. Um, what we've learned in, in the last couple of decades is that patients with psoriasis have an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Uh, so, for example, a patient with severe psoriasis at the age of 30 would have as much as a threefold increase in uh, myocardial infarctions. Um, other comorbidities are hypertension, stroke, um, obesity. Uh, uh, there are some papers that suggest that there's an increase in certain cancers, particularly skin cancers and lymphoma. Um, uh, and and uh, other comorbidities like diabetes and hypertension uh, occur as well. Uh, genetics plays a major role in the development of psoriasis. Um, if you look at uh, uh, pa pa two parents who both have psoriasis, the chance of one of their children having psoriasis or of a particular child having psoriasis may be higher than 50%. If one parent has psoriasis, the chance of their child having psoriasis is approximately one out of six. Um, so genes certainly play a role. Um, and there are a lot of uh, older twin studies which uh, look at identic identical and fraternal twins and show that identical twins have a much uh, higher likelihood of having psoriasis if one of the twins uh, have psoriasis. When we've looked for individual genes involved in the development of psoriasis, it's become apparent very quickly that it is a multifactorial disease. It's a combination of multiple genes with environmental factors that contribute to psoriasis. Environmental factors being things like uh, absence of sun exposure uh, contributes to psoriasis. But there are more than one gene, many genes, that have been implicated in the development of psoriasis. There are other triggers for psoriasis uh, in addition to the absence of sunlight. And I would say psoriasis is much more common at higher latitudes where there's less sunlight than equatorial latitudes where there's more sun. Uh, 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 but in addition, we know that um, uh, in, in places where uh, the seasons are more extreme, uh, psoriasis tends to worsen in the winter and get better in the summer. Uh, and that probably is because of sun exposure. So certainly absence of sun is a trigger. There are many other triggers. Guttate psoriasis, for example, is frequently triggered by uh, strep infections. Um, and that's a kind of uh, psoriasis that is more common in children, although it can occur in adults as well. Um, and, uh, and children will have a severe flare following a strep infection. And then, uh, often following ultraviolet light treatments, they'll clear, uh, and the condition might not come back ever. So um, that's a well-known trigger of psoriasis. Um, there are a number of medications that are known to trigger psoriasis, the most common being the withdrawal of systemic steroids. Um, so a patient who has mild psoriasis or doesn't even know he or she has psoriasis gets poison ivy, gets treated with prednisone, and when the prednisone is stopped, psoriasis flares badly. Um, uh, that is the most common trigger of uh, medication trigger of psoriasis. 
Um, there are other well-known triggers. Lithium, for example, is a well-known trigger of psoriasis. Um, there are some blood pressure medicines where, psoriasis, where exacerbation of psoriasis can occur, although those tend to be um, more modest exacerbations, like beta blockers, uh, ACE inhibitors. Um, uh, Anti-malarials are known to trigger psoriasis. Interferon is known to trigger psoriasis. So there are a variety of medication triggers as well. The severity of psoriasis is assessed by uh, a number of measures. Uh, typically in a clinician's office, they just look at a patient and make a judgment. Is it you know, mild, moderate, severe? Can I manage it with topical therapies? Do I need to go to systemic therapies because it's too extensive? Um, and the impact that it, that it has on a patient's life factors in there as well. When we look at it scientifically in clinical trials, for example, the most common uh, tool used to measure psoriasis is called the PASI score, Psoriasis Area and Severity Index. Um, and what we incorporate into that score is a measure of the body surface area that's affected combined with the severity me measured on a zero to four scale of plaque thickness, scaling, and redness. And each of those is assigned a zero to four scale. You end up with a, a, a score that's somewhere from zero, which means no psoriasis, to 72, which is every spot on your body is covered head to toe with severe, thick, red, scaly, uh, thick plaques, uh, and that would be a 72. So, and of course, uh, patients with bad psoriasis are anywhere from 10 or higher. Uh, the majority of patients have 10 or lower. So roughly 80% of patients for, for, fall into that zero to 10 uh, uh, measure where their psoriasis isn't that bad, although it's still bad enough to treat. Um, uh, but uh, numbers higher than 10 tend to be more severe. Those are the numbers that usually require systemic therapy. Even in patients who have scores below 10, um, so if you think of a PASI score, uh, which incorporates the percentage body surface area, the palm of the hand is 1%. Well, patients who have just the hands involved, both hands, that's severe to them. Every time they shake someone's hand, uh, they have to be embarrassed about their psoriasis. Uh, every time they button their shirt, they might not be able to button their shirt or their skin cracks and bleeds and they stay in their clothes. So even just 2%, which involves the hands, is bad psoriasis. Um, severe uh, psoriasis of the scalp, which extends onto the face, uh, can be severe even though it's a few percent of the body surface area because people see it. Uh, and uh, so it has a dramatic impact on the patient's quality of life.